This is a 3.9 weapons and armor tier guide. Theaters of War Prep. We're going to talk about several things this video, weapons, armor, attachments. We'll start off with armor. We're going to be using the P8 SMG to test this. This is a pretty mid-tier weapon, and when I started this video, what I wanted to show you was the difference between light, medium, and heavy armor. And this is what I found. Seven shots to the chest with light armor is going to be a takedown. As well as three shots to the head. Moving on to medium armor. It's going to take six shots for a takedown as well as three shots to the head. Hmm. And lastly, heavy armor. It's going to again take seven shots to the chest and this time four shots to the head. Now, what I'm finding here is it doesn't matter that much what type of armor you're wearing. And I'm not surprised because we checked the stamina and between medium, light and heavy, there's not much of a difference either. Personally, in Theaters of War, you're going to be seeing me wear a medium armor set with a heavy helmet, or if that's not an option, either medium or heavy armor. On to damage fall off. At about 25 meters, we pretty much see the P8 performing exactly as it was before. 35 meters, pretty much the same results. Now here at about 50 meters, you see two things, bullet drop, and it gets actively harder to hit your bullets because of recoil. But that is exactly to be expected. So far, no damage fall off. And finally, as far as I can get back about 75 meters, I'm just unable to land my shots and get the kill here. I really tried. Based on what my teammate was telling me though, it did seem like there was a bit of damage fall off at this point. Next, we're going to talk about hit registration. Now, Star Citizen, believe it or not, has really, really, really great hitboxes. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If I draw an outline here, you can see his face on the inside of the helmet. Now, if I shoot this helmet where his face isn't, it's actually going to do zero damage, which is kind of awesome. This is the same on any part of the armor. If I do a quick scan around the armor, you'll see that I'm shooting here, but it's going straight through the armor. Now, I do think there actually is supposed to be some aim punch here, but it is intentional that zero damage is supposed to happen. Next, we're going to be covering heavy weapons, starting with the Animus Missile Launcher. Now, this is going to be a tier D, and I'll explain why. If we lock onto our target here and we fire, you'll notice our missiles kind of just disappear. Now, I fully expect this is going to be fixed before Theater's War comes out, but I can't just ignore the fact that right now it's not working properly. Then we have the Escort Railgun. This is going to be a, a tier S for obvious reasons. If we put four shots into this Avenger Titan, you'll see. Boom. Just like that, the Titan goes down. Now, in Theaters of War, ships are going to be a lot harder to hit. This isn't an anti-personal weapon either. This is for vehicles. You actually have to fully charge up this weapon now. I think this was a much needed move that they implemented in 3.9 to balance this for Star Citizen and Theaters of War. On to snipers. First, we have the P6LR Ballistic Sniper. This is the best one in the game. Highest damage, fastest travel time, least drop. Then we have the Scalpel Ballistic Sniper at Tier A. This is pretty much just a slightly less powerful P6. Then you have the Arrowhead Sniper at our first Tier C. And the main reason for that is two things. To do the most amount of damage with the Arrowhead, you have to charge it up. And the bullet travel time is just as much as a Ballistic Sniper. At this point, for me, I might as well just use the Ballistic Sniper. LMGs are up next. Firstly, we have the Dimico Energy LMG at Tier S, and the reason for that, it has basically no recoil, and it has 100 rounds in the mag. This thing is a monster. Next, we have Tier B, the F-55 Ballistic LMG. This thing is pretty good. It gets infinitely harder to control as you keep firing it. Not only that, but it starts shaking your screen violently. The Dimico is the obvious winner out of these weapons. Up next, we have the Assault Rifles. 
Firstly, we have the Karna Plasma Rifle at a tier A. This thing is nasty. It's so, so good. It's even better if you throw an E-Mod Stabilizer on the bottom. I will note that the secondary fire mode, the charge up beam is tier D. It's pretty much useless. Next, we have the Gallant Energy Rifle at tier A. Uh, this thing is nasty. Burst fire or full auto. Then we have the P4AR. This thing is probably the best close range AR in the game. Uh, very, very good. Then we have the S71 Assault Rifle. This is a tier B. It fires more like a DMR, but in the right hands, it definitely could be a tier A weapon. Then we have SMGs. Coming in at a tier A, this is the Custodian. With the 60 round mag and control for recoil, this thing is very, very good. Then we have the P8 Ballistic SMG. This is a tier B. I showed this off earlier. Then we have a Lumen SMG. I do not like the recoil control on this thing. This is personal preference, but I put this thing at tier C. I wouldn't use it. If I were you, there are better options. Next, we have shotguns. Now, let me note that any shotgun is going to be a one-hit kill if you're close enough. Firstly, we have the Ravenger Twin Shotgun. This is going to be a tier A. Very, very good. Then we have the R97 Ballistic Shotgun at tier A. Also very good and arguably the longest range shotgun in the game. Then we have the Devastator Energy Shotgun. This is going to be a tier C, mainly because the charge of time and the range just doesn't really make it worth it. It is a really cool gun but it's just not very deadly. Next category, we have pistols. Now coming in as one of my favorite guns in the game, we have the Coda Ballistic Pistol. The Coda is capable of pretty much taking out anyone in any armor with one shot if you land it in the right place, and I love that about it. Next, we have the Salvo Frag Pistol. This was a hard call between S and A. It's got two modes, hold left trigger for shotgun burst and then tap for single fire. Next, we have the Arc Light Energy Pistol at tier B. Now, I love this thing. It's very fun to fire and you can fire really fast if you tap. Same thing for the S38 Ballistic Pistol at tier B. It's basically the ballistic version of the Arc Light. And I gotta admit, it's very fun to use. Then we have the LH-86 Ballistic Pistol coming in at tier C. This is basically the worst version of the S-38. Then we have melee and grenades. Melee coming in at tier B. Uh, you can left click and left click hold for different swings. But then if you come right behind someone and you middle click, you can do a full stealth combat takedown. And this is gonna be tier S. Then we have MK4 frag grenades, and these are pretty good, uh, except when they're not. If you hold them for a tick and then you let go of them, they tend to perform better, but yeah, they're okay. Now sights and scopes. Firstly, we have the Delta Reflex Sight at Tier S. It's got lots of visibility, very clear, small red dot. I really love it. Tier B for the Gamma Holographic 1X. Little less visibility here. The Gamma Holographic 2X, and it's about the same, but it is the only 2X in the game. Then we have the Tier A Gamma Plus Holographic 3X. Now it's the same side, but you can see because it's zoomed in, you actually get a lot more visibility. Then next, we have the Tau Plus 4X Telegraphic Scope. I hope I said that right. I love how clear and clean this scope is. Very nice for target acquisition. Then we have the Tier D OT4-RF Telescopic 4X. I really don't like the way this scope looks, and it cuts off a ton of visibility. Then we have the Tier S Theta Pro 8X Telescopic Sight. I really, really love this. This is so good. Look how clean and clear that is. Next, we have the Tier B Black Prism Telescopic 8X. It's not bad, but it does cover up quite a bit of your screen and is a lot busier. Then we have the Tier B Touchstone Monitor 8X. 
The only reason this isn't a tier C is because it has great visibility, but to be honest, it's got a pretty poor reticle in my opinion. Then we have the tier A EE16 Telescopic 16X. It's the only 16X in the game. Although I'd like a scope with more visibility, it does its job pretty well. And that's going to be it for our weapons tier guide. Thank you very much for watching. We didn't cover attachments much in this video, mainly because I'm waiting to see what weapons they give us in Theaters of War. Then we'll dive into the details. If you have any more questions, leave a comment below. Reach out to me on Discord or Twitch. We have a great community. If I can't answer a question, someone else will be happy to. And also we have, well, moments oh, like this. Oh no, I wasn't paying attention. Get out of there, Red. Get out of there. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. No. <laughs> oh my god, Bruce. There it goes. Holy fuck. He just killed me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm sorry, guys. Don't read chat in mine. Don't read chat in mine. That's it for now, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, this is Captain Burks signing off.